thankful again for everybody who joins us daily to seek the Lord's face. Um, we are grateful for this time that God has allowed us. We didn't pick it. Hey, cousin Deborah, bless you. Uh, we didn't pick this time to be home. We didn't pick this time to think we would need a prayer line. But God, in his infinite wisdom, decided that this was a time that we as his people would need to come together in prayer. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for those who are faithfully joining us each day. I believe there's power in the unity of our prayer and that God is doing a work. Uh, we hear enough testimonies and we hear from people that God is uh, blessing them through this time and working in their lives through this time. And so we want to uh, definitely take advantage of this and continue to seek his face together. What I am going to do today is share on, on prayer particularly. Uh, we have been talking about various topics and certainly every day we pray for people, but today the burden of my heart is to actually talk about prayer that is effective and impactful and sees uh, results, so to speak, that God answers. Um, and we, uh, we are going to look at some scripture. Um, I'm also going to post on my Facebook page a prayer that you can um, use. Um, I've encouraged people to use it in the past and God has moved. Um, we don't believe that God is, you know, a genie. We're not rubbing a, a, a bottle and saying hocus pocus. So we're not playing some kind of game like that. We come out of a relationship with God. When we pray, we pray based upon that relationship. Uh, so know that when we come together in prayer, it is not a case where we just say, oh, you know, let me just say these magic words and God is going to answer it. So, so don't get that twisted. Don't get that confused. We come together with uh, one another in prayer with the notion that because we have a relationship with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, he hears our cry. When I'm talking about prayers that get through and impact and, and touch God's heart, I'm talking about prayers that line up with the principles of his word, because there are prayers that are clearly uh, in agreement and in alignment with his word. And then there are prayers that on the other hand are not. Um, there are times when we pray things um, kind of randomly. Um, God is merciful and he has answered all kinds of prayers. Um, but I believe he has a manner, if you will, in which he wants us to pray. Uh, we are going to look at scripture and I'm posting right now on my Facebook page the uh, prayer that I'm going to be sharing with you today so you can um, always look at that and it's a resource that you can always go back to. All righty. So uh, I'm going to turn to Mark chapter number 16 for those who may want to take a note or read in your Bible with me, I'm going to read verses 17 and 18. Um, let me preface it with a brief testimony. Many of you who have been with us for a while know this testimony, but some may not. Back on, I don't know the exact date, I'll be honest, but Resurrection Weekend on that Saturday, early in the day, I woke up with an unction that God was going to do something powerful. And I remember saying, posting it on my social media, emailing my class. I was teaching a spiritual warfare class at the time. And I remember posting something to this effect, that God is going to show up with resurrection power and he's going to do some resurrection healing in the name of Jesus. And I remember saying to my class in particular, I said, touch and agree with me that God's going to manifest his resurrection power in Victoria and in others. And they said, amen. And they touched and agreed. I shared it with my family. I put it on social media as well. Well, that was early Saturday. And then I came back to it afterwards because honestly I kind of lost track of the time frame it was only when I looked back that I realized it was that Saturday 
but just so you have the context is why I'm saying this. So that Saturday, the day before Resurrection Sunday, I decree this because that's what the unction that God put in my heart. Then on Saturday, that evening, I went over to Victoria's. Victoria had been struggling. Uh, she had leukemia. Her body was very weak. Her bloodstream was something like 75% or so. Her blood was tainted with um, her, I don't know what the contorted blood cells that had been impacted by leukemia. Um, she was very weak. She couldn't eat. Uh, anything she tried to eat would come back up. Um, she was so lethargic that literally she was like, <clears throat> I mean, I would try to hold her head up so she could eat something or give her something to drink or help her get in the bed. She was just completely like out of it. And I remember going over there to help her get in the bed and uh, or help her, whatever it was she needed, I guess, get some food in her. I sat her up. That's what it was. She was in the bed. I sat her up just so she could have been in bed for days, weeks, really. Um, at that point, it probably had been a couple of months. Um, and we were concerned about her getting bed sores. So I sat her in the chair just for a different perspective, you know, and I thought, you know, maybe she can get some fresh air. I put her in front of the window, all of that. And then I gave her food, hoping that it would stay down this time because literally everything she had eaten kept coming back up. And the doctors were very concerned, so much so that they were saying things that made me realize they were very concerned, um, making sure her will was in place or her power of attorney and all that kind of stuff. So I went over, I got her fed, I got her in bed. It was late on Saturday. It had been a tough week. Um, as you know, by then we had been home for a few weeks from, you know, being locked down from the pandemic. I was working like crazy. Um, my job, because I'm a department head, I have 20 some people under me, making sure everybody's getting what they need, making sure I'm keeping up with contracts. So I'm a contract administrator. So it had just been a very difficult week. So it's Saturday night. I'm tired. I taught Friday night because at that time I was teaching a class called Spirit Women's Guides and Spiritual Warfare, and it met on Saturday. And I poured out on Friday night, so I'm tired. It's Saturday. I'm it's late. I just want to go home. And I'm just being honest with you, so you can appreciate my my circumstance and the full totality of the situation. So, just as I was putting her to bed, and just as I was ready to leave, the Holy Spirit reminded me, "You know, you can't leave without praying for it." Now, my flesh was thinking, oh, yeah, I got to pray. Let me just do a quick prayer <laughs> and go home. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost had other plans. So I went and I got the oil out of obedience. I anointed her and I laid hands on her. And then I just opened my mouth to allow the Spirit of God to speak through me as he would. And I'm hoping you're catching all of these nuances because I think these are all part of what makes for an effective prayer. When I yield myself to pray for somebody, I'm not just saying some words. I'm hearing in the spirit, listening to hear what the spirit of God is speaking to me so that I can pray in accordance with his will. Because we know if we pray according to his will, the word of God tells us in 1 John uh, chapter 5, verse 14, 15, if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have what we've asked for. So as I'm laying hands on her and I'm praying, I'm listening to hear what the spirit would have me to pray. And that's one of the scriptures I want to share with you today. But I prayed for her after she had eaten. And mind you, she hadn't been able to keep anything down. And she said immediately she felt the power of God go over her body. I went on home. Did my normal routine. But by that next morning, when Dr. V went over to visit her, because he normally go over in the morning, check on her, she was vibrant. Now, I had given her this little teeny plastic ball, literally a little kid's ball that they play with, you know, when you're two or three years old, kind of, so no weight. I just given it to her to toss in the air just to kind of try to build up some momentum and energy. Well, she couldn't do that the day before because that's how toxic her body was. And how weak her body was. Well, that next morning on Sunday, she was throwing the ball. She was eating like crazy. She kept down what she had eaten when I was there. She had all this energy. He literally said it was a miracle. 
He tested her blood. It came back showing that her blood level of leukemia infested cells had gone from 75 to down to like 23 or 73 to 25, whatever it was, a dramatic change. All of her, um, uh, what's the word I want? Vitamin levels and her uh, protein and calcium and all those. Her, her white blood cell count had been down so low we were quarantining her before we were quarantining because we were so afraid she would catch anything. Any minor germ could have wiped her out. Her white blood cells were almost zero. So we get to the day after we pray, they test her. Her white blood cells are off the charts. I mean, like, I think they had jumped like 5,000 points or some craziness. All that's to say, God heard that prayer. By the end of the week, her cells had gone from 23%, I think it was, down to 10% the next time they tested. And eventually, within a couple of weeks, he said there was no cancer in her body at all. There was no sign of leukemia. They decreed her clean. So what was it about that prayer? And so God, I believe, has pressed it upon my heart to talk about prayer because we want to be effective in prayer. I love praying. I mean, I could pray all day. But I don't want to waste my time. I'm not interested in babbling. I want God to hear my prayers and I want him to answer. And I want to see power emanating from me to take authority over those things that God has told me I can have authority over. So let's look at three key scripture and then we're going to pray because I want us to pray out of the boldness and the knowledge of God's word. So, first scripture I want to look at is Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19 is a fundamental scripture that I go to anytime I'm teaching somebody on prayer or deliverance, anything that has to do with breakthrough, so to speak, in the life of a believer, um, in the life of a believer's prayer life, that is, of a believer. So if you look at Luke 10, 19, it says, behold, this is Jesus speaking. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What that means is all the power that the devil has, every sickness, every disease, every tormenting spirit, you as a blood-bought believer have authority over. Jesus has delegated his authority over those powers, if you will, to you to me, to us as his body. What happens is oftentimes we don't take that authority. It'd be like a person who uh, comes into your house and just takes over and they do whatever they want to do. And they take whatever they want and they walk out and you just sit there like, wow, I can't believe they did that. But as a homeowner, come on now, the reality is if people start taking stuff out of your house, you would arrest them and say, hold up, dude, um, I'm going to need you to put that back. That's my property. That's the tone we have to speak to when we speak to the things of the enemy. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But for now, let's deal with sickness. So we have established in Luke 10, 19, just so you can see it in context, 18, this is Jesus. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you a authority. And you can go on and read that. The key thing is you have authority over all the power of the enemy, or King James might say all the works of the enemy. Now, what's the other verse? Mark chapter 16, verse 17. This again is the Lord Jesus. He's about to ascend back into heaven. He has res been resurrected and he is speaking to us as believers. What does he tell us? In verse 17 of Mark chapter 16, it says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Any believers out there? Hey, me. So these are the signs that are supposed to follow you, believer. What signs? In my name. Not in Letty's name. This is Jesus. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. 
So let's look at that. I laid hands on Victoria. She recovered. So that wasn't anything special about me. That was about the word of God being manifest as I put it into practice. And you as a blood-bought believer have the same authority and the same, same power residing on the inside of you. In the Holy Ghost, abiding in you, his spirit lives in you. The same God that lived in Jesus lives in you. Amen. So I hear somebody saying, I'm a believer. That's praise God. That's good. So guess what? This is written to you. You have authority to lay hands on the sick. But how did he say it? In my name. So in the name of Jesus, you have authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, the last verse I want to share with you is in Acts. Now, Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. Acts is the Acts of those who walk with Jesus, who now take what he taught them and put it into practice as an example for what we are to do. So in Acts chapter number four and verse number, I'm going to start from verse 27. This is, uh, I believe, Peter speaking. And he says, for truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to do to be done. So we know that those are the people who were involved in his crucifixion. And God, they did exactly what you allowed them to do. How many know God is still in control? And he can only, only the enemy or anything can happen to us that he allows because my life is in his hands. So it's got to be filtered through his fingers to get to me. Likewise, as you belong to him. So only what God allowed happened to the Lord. But let's keep going. Verse 29 says, now, Lord, and this is a scripture that's very important for me in my prayer life. He said, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Go back to. What do we see in Mark 16? These signs shall follow. So now here's Peter saying, Lord, let the signs follow us so that they know we're your children, so they know we belong to you, so that we can profess who you said and speak your word of boldness. Let the signs follow. What is powerful about this verse? Well, there's a lot. Two key things. He said, let us proclaim your word. Let us speak with boldness. That's the sign of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the righteous are bold as a lion, the scripture says. But then he goes forth and says, by how, how shall we do this? By stretching forth your hand. Now we saw in Mark, he said, I can lay hands. We can lay hands. Now Peter said, Lord, stretch forth your hand. And heal, to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name, there we go again, of your holy servant, Jesus. We're not doing this in our own power. We're not doing it in our own authority. And we certainly aren't doing it in our own name. It is not the name of Letty that healed Victoria. It's the name of Jesus that healed Victoria. And when I laid hands on her, I specifically said, Father, I am your servant. And I'm asking you to stretch forth your hand to heal in the mighty name of Jesus. In other words, I'm yielding myself as a vessel that when I touch her, you touch her. That when I speak, you speak through me. And so when I laid hands, I laid hands in the name of Jesus according to the authority he had given me as a blood boy believer, but I also asked God stretch forth your hand. And when he did, she felt it. And when he did, she got made whole. And so there's a principle that I'm trying to drive home here, multiple principles really, but key here for me is one, in the name of Jesus. Two, I have authority over the sickness and disease. Three, 
that authority was delegated by Jesus so that signs and wonders would follow me. They're supposed to. That's not supposed to be some phenomenal thing. Signs and wonders should be following us as bought, purchased believers in the name of Jesus. And then involve God in the process. I got a text that said, why did, why did God say, for your namesake. Remember yesterday, if you were here, I read a scripture and it said, um, for your namesake, God. And the person was like, well, why does he say that? Because God honors his word. Because God honors his name. So when I come in accordance with his word, he honors that. Now, we are not Simon the sorcerer. I need to make that clear. Who was Simon? Simon was a man that they encountered during their travels throughout the book of Acts. And he saw them lay hands and 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 the person be filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, Oh, I want to do that. Teach me how to do that. I got some money. You can have my money. No, we're not here. We're not circus clowns and we're not here to perform some miracle so people can be in awe of us. We're here to glorify the Lord. And we're here because we have a relationship with God. So in the name of Jesus, when we pray today, I want you to pray with the boldness that God gives us in authority with and in, in, in the name of Jesus and according to the authority he has given us in his word. I want you to understand, and I, Lord willing, when I come back, and I don't have a guest the next time, I think I got a guest for the next several days until again. Mondays and Tuesdays, I've kind of set aside as my teaching time. My goal is to help you become powerful prayer warriors. And so when you come in the name of Jesus, you come in agreement with the word of God. God honors his word. For my name's sake, I'm going to honor that prayer. Because I told you to do that in my son's name. I told you that signs and wonders would follow. And because you belong to me, I will honor that prayer. And he, Peter said, Lord, give us boldness. Sometimes you need God to say, to intervene and deal with you before you can pray because you come in a trembling, fearful way. You're not going to see a move of God. But when you come in the authority and the power that God has given you, you pray with boldness and you see God move in your behalf. The last part of the prayer that I prayed over Victoria um, was about me then taking that authority. There's two different ver parts of that prayer. One was, God, you move through me and heal her. The second part was me operating. I know Pastor Jenkins' pet peeve is in the middle of a prayer. We start saying, devil this, and I bind that, and you do this. And I understand what he's saying. If I'm praying to God, why am I start talking to the devil? So after I finished talking to God, in Jesus' name. Then I moved to dealing with the sickness. And I said, sickness, leukemia, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of this body. Now I'm operating in my authority because God has given me authority over all sickness and disease, over all the works of the enemy. So I've gone from praying to God to now stepping out as the representative of God. And I take authority over that. And I command it to go. Now, you can do that in person. You can do that by far, far away. And when we come back the next time, we'll talk about the far, far away talk part. But for now, I posted the prayer on my prayer line, on my uh, Facebook page, and in my on my uh, website so that you can use it and know that God honest that prayer. I got testimonies from people in my class who got others to come in agreement with them and pray that prayer. And people who were on death's bed came home and are well today. So know that we are praying not some hocus pocus, but we pray because we know God's word and because we love God and we have a relationship with him. So today I pray that something I said inspired you to pray a bolder prayer so that when we pray, heaven will answer. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Let's open a prayer line and let's pray.
like we know we have authority to pray in Muted. Jesus name. Unmuted. <laughs> Lord, we come in the master's name of Jesus, first of all, confessing our faults before you, admitting that we don't deserve anything, but it's because of your great love and your mercy toward us that you allowed us to come today and to pray and to know that you will hear us and you will answer. God, I come touching and agreeing with prayers that are being cried out to you right now. I come, Lord God, thanking you now for your mighty works toward men. I thank you now that you have given us authority over all the works of the enemy, and you have given us authority over sickness and disease. And in the name of Jesus, I call out to you, God, stretch forth your hand to heal right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch forth your hand, oh God, and touch people who are in sick beds right now. Stretch forth your hand, God, to touch people who are operators right now. Touch Harry Collins right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we crowd to you, God. Even for Woody, Lord God, touch his body in the name of Jesus. We crowd to you, God, for the names of all those on my prayer list and on my prayer wall, God. You know every by name. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, O King. I ask you to stretch forth your hand to heal. Touch every sick in doctor's hospital in Prince George's County, Maryland, oh God. Touch everybody and every sick person in PG County Hospital and Washington Hospital Center and every veterans hospital, God, and PIW today. Stretch forth your hands over Fort Washington Hospital, oh God. Stretch forth your hand over this region and touch and heal Virginia Hospital sickness, oh God. And Touch and heal throughout this great nation, God. Every hospital, every nursing home, every person struggling and grasping to breathe today. Stretch forth your hand to heal in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I cry out for those who are mourning today. Heal the hearts that are broken. You said you heal the broken heart. You bind up their wounds. Bind up their wounds today, oh God. Heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus over every sick soul today every mind that's sick oh god minds that need to be healed i cry out god stretch forth your hand to touch even victoria's mind even her physical body lord god every vestige of brokenness everything that's not connecting properly bring it into perfect alignment with your perfect gift will Stretch forth your hand to heal and touch my Mary's body right now. Touch every other sick person, God. We bind up the spirit of sickness and disease in every format. We bind COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every form of sickness under the sound of my voice. I bind the works of the enemy. I bind cancer. I bind leukemia. I bind lupus. I command you to come out of the bodies of the people of God in the name of Jesus. Every sick body in the name of Jesus that's gasping right now. I speak healing and wholeness. Be made whole in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus today. Break every chain, oh God. Destroy every yoke, oh God. Make room, holy one, for your presence in their lives. Drive out what is alien them and fill them with your Holy Spirit, Holy One of Israel, I cry out to you in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. We thank you for the authority you have given us. And we take that authority by your name. In Jesus' name, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our cries. Thank you for healing broken bodies. Thank you for healing broken minds. Thank you for healing broken hearts today. In the name of Jesus, let your divine presence and your power be made manifest, O King. That people will know that surely you are in this place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I bless you. I praise you. I honor you, God. Great is your faithfulness, O King. Glory to glory, glory to your name, O oh God. Break every chain, destroy every yoke, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, do a work, Holy One of Israel, as only you can. Show yourself mighty, show yourself strong. I plead the blood of Jesus across the land. I plead the blood of Jesus across the land. I plead the blood of Jesus across the land. Heal in the name of Jesus, I beseech you, O King. 
Let your hand rest upon every sick body across this continent, across every continent, across this globe. Let your hand rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring healing in your wings, O King. We pray this in the name of Jesus, God. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you, God. Glory to your name. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy to be praised. There is nothing too hard for you, O oh God. You are well able, God. In Jesus' name, we praise you. We thank you. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. To you be the glory. To you be the honor, God. To you be the praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah, God. I praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I touch and agree with every prayer that's gone forward today. I thank you, God, that your hand is not too short. To heal. I ask you even now, stretch forth your hand to heal. Heal every name that has been called out before you today. Heal every body, every sickness, every disease, O oh King. Heal every heart, every mind, O oh God. You are well able, Father. There is nothing too hard for you, our God. We thank you, God, for the privilege of being called by your name. We thank you that you have given us authority over the works of the enemy, and we walk in that authority. God, as your people cried out. I crowd in agreement with them. Bless them. Keep them. Guide them. Cover them by the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh God, even though sick under the sound of my voice, I speak healing and wholeness over their bodies. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be made whole by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we cry out, Abba, have mercy on them in Jesus' name. Let your in divine miraculous healing power stretch forth across the airways and touch and heal in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We cry out yet again for every worker, every frontline person that goes out, God, whether they be medical professionals, Dr. V and Dr. A and Michael O'God and even Jackie and even my girl Vanessa, God, as they go out daily to sit heal them, their bodies Lord God, if there be anything in them but Lord, use them to heal others and cover them by the precious blood of the Lamb cover their colleagues, every nurse every doctor, every surgeon Lord God, every respiratory aid every person that goes out to clean the hospitals and clean the nursing homes and serve in dietary every person that goes out to serve in a store, God, or serve in a restaurant, or every police officer every responding person God firefighters, every person that goes out to put it on the line to serve us, cover and keep them, protect their families. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person that serves in government today as they make decisions that will re respond or, or impact our lives. God, give them wisdom in the name of Jesus. I cry for Angela Asa Brooks. Bless her, God. Bless Governor Hogan. Bless every other governor, every other county exec. Cover them and keep them. Bless Muriel Biles and every other mayor, God. Every council person, every state legislator, every state senator, every federal government uh, uh, senator and every federal representative, oh God, and even the president, we plead the blood of Jesus over his life and we pray your divine wisdom and guidance, oh God, that you would him and men on every side, that you would protect him and show him your divine will, that he will walk therein, oh God, that you would eliminate ungodly counsel from his ears and show him your way in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every pastor and every household of faith, God, that your people who are called by your name would truly humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Oh God, that you would heal our land is our cry. We thank you, God. We bless your holy name. We thank you that on this prayer line, God, there's families represented. I plead the blood of Jesus over their families, their children, even their children's children's children, God, that you were blessed through a thousand generations in the name of Jesus. I bless you. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel like I could move a mountain right about now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for giving us that privilege. Now, Father, we ask you to touch hearts 
that if there's any who hears my voice, whether it's at this moment or another time when they listen, God prick their hearts that they will receive Jesus today. I lift up the name of Jesus to you. If you don't know him as your savior, all of these things are great and they're powerful and they're wonderful, but they don't apply to you because you don't know Jesus. You got to know him for yourself. You got to have a relationship. And I cry out on your behalf today. I implore you. I beseech you. Don't walk around uncovered by the blood of the lamb. Don't walk around without the privilege of knowing God and being able to pray and be confident that he hears your prayers. How do you get that confidence? It starts with a relationship through his son, Jesus Christ. He has told us very plainly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It's in his name that we pray, but I can't pray in his name and have confidence that he hears me if I don't have a relationship with him. So I invite you today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I beseech you again, pray this prayer with me. If you've been walking around on lukewarm avenue, you know I'm talking about you straddling the fence. One minute you're in church, one minute you look like the world. And you want to say, you know what, God, I'm tired of playing games. I'm going to do it all. I'm all in. If that's you, then I invite you to pray this prayer as well. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried. God raised you from the dead. I accept you now, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Come in, take control of my life. I repent of my sins. I'm willing to turn from everything that's not like you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. That is so powerful what you just did. Your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is in heaven. And you are now a child of the King. You're a child of God. You should celebrate. We are rejoicing with you. The angels, the Bible says the angels rejoice when one person repents. So God is giving a party in your name today. Write your date down today and say, today is my spiritual birthday. Today I start afresh. Today I've been born again. Reach out to me. Let me know. I would love to pray with you. I would love to encourage you in the word. Just to know that you've given your life to Christ would be a blessing to me. If you've gotten healed through these prayer lines, if you've seen some breakthrough, if anything has happened, you want to share a testimony. R-E-V-L-E-T-T-I-E-C-A-R-R, Rev Letty Carr. That's all one word at whosoeverbelieves.org. Rev Letty Carr at whosoeverbelieves.org. It's all one word. And I would love to hear from you. Know that God loves you as well as I love you. I thank you for being here with us today. And we know that God heard our cries. I don't know about you, but I felt breakthrough anointing in the atmosphere. So I'm looking for some powerful testimonies to come forward. 